Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on impedance matching. Okay, for this video, I strongly suggest you guys to take a look on the part 14 series discussion on impedance matching before you actually come into this video. Okay, so this is because at the part 14, I actually have discussed all the essential formula that are required to design multi-stage transformer using Chappie Shield. So basically for this video, I will have an example how to design this multi-stage transformer using Chappie Shield for impedance matching. So this will be the part 15 series discussion on impedance matching. So guys, if you're keen to know more about impedance matching, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on impedance matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Or maybe I strongly suggest that you guys ask your question through the comment. Okay, this is because I hardly check this email. So guys, if you want to have a faster response, okay, please ask me the question through the comment. Or maybe also, what are the topics that you guys are keen? Okay, again, you can send it through the comment. Or for example, how can I actually improve the quality of this channel? Again, all this can be sent through the comment. Okay, before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel and also turn on your notification bell. Once again, Thank you so much for strong support. Okay, so these are the six formulas that I've introduced on the part 14 series discussion on the so-called essential formula that are required to design a multi-session transformer using Chapel Shield. Okay, so basically I have explained how we can actually utilize these four formulas. Okay, over here, like what I mentioned earlier, I will have an example how to make use of these six formula in order to calculate the impedance okay, of the multi-session quarter wavelength transformer using Chapitio method. So this will be the objective of this video. Without delay, let's quickly come to the example. Okay, for example, for this example, I'm actually tasked to design a three session, okay, which means that N will be equal to three. Okay, using this Chapitio transformer, in order to match a 100 ohm loads, to a 50 ohms line okay, with the maximum reflection coefficient equals to 0 0.05. Okay, so whatever that are given, okay, I have written over here okay, to make things easier. So I will take a look on this from time to time. In short, you can see from here, this will be the load. Okay, so this will be the transmission line. You can see that it actually matched through one, two, three. Three session. Okay, basically, I need to design this three session using Chapel Shield. How can I actually start to do this? Okay, before I continue again, okay, if you still remember on the part 14 series discussion, I have mentioned that Chapel Shield, I actually will have a symmetric link. Okay, so again from here, okay, since this is one, two, three, and basically right at the middle of this second session will be my symmetric line. And basically I draw this symmetric line, you can see that my first reflection coefficient and my second reflection coefficient, they will be the same, which is denoted over here. And the so-called the zero reflection coefficient and the third reflection coefficient, they will be the same. So basically, this will be the first characteristics. Remember, for Chapel Shield, you actually will have a symmetric line. So basically, for this case, since n equals to 3, I know that my symmetric line will be right at the middle of the second session. So therefore, I brought this characteristic line, and from here, okay, I can also easily so-called link the two same reflection coefficient as you can see from here. So once I done this, I will make use of the first formula. Okay, remember there are six formula. So this will be the first formula, and the question given to me, I already know that n equals to three. So over here, you can see that I substitute n equals to three in order to get this equation. Okay, so for later on, okay, basically you can see that this is basically the equation which I have derived on part 14, okay, 
because of the time I'm not able to do this again. So again, if you are confused how I actually get this, like what I mentioned earlier on, please take a look on the part 14 series first before you come into this video. So basically at the part 14, I have explained how can we actually derive this session here. So in short, basically you can see from here, Okay, so this T3 is actually what is over this term. So therefore, you can see that this part, I will remain here and they multiply by T3 here. So basically all the T3 term I actually replaced by here and I actually expand the bracket. So basically this will be the overall so-called equation okay, for the first equation. Okay, so once I've done this, I'm ready to move on to the second equation. Okay, so what can we do on the second equation? So this will be the second equation. Again, I know that n is equals to three. So from here, you can see that n equals to three. So this will be three and basically three minus two will be equals to one. Okay, so once I get one, I will not be so-called continue anymore because it will not have negative numbers. So therefore I stop over here. And again, if I expand them out, okay, I will have this equation. Okay, so based on the first equation here, I actually has this equation and based on the second equation, I actually have this equation. So next, I'm going to compare the coefficient. Okay, so how can I actually compare the coefficient? Okay, so this will be my first example. This will be my second example. So I'm ready to compare the coefficient. So I compare the co coefficient by using this cosine 3 theta here. So basically, you can see that I box up. Okay, so basically this will be the two term that I will do a comparison. So next thing that I'm going to do is I strike up all the common term. Okay, and then basically from here you can see that this will be A set 3 theta m over here. And this will be 2 okay, reflection coefficient 0 which is here. And again to find the reflection coefficient 0, I just need to move the 2 over. So basically it will be A divided by 2 okay, set 3 theta m which is shown over here. Okay, so basically this is one equation okay, which allow us to find the reflection coefficient at zero. So next step I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a compare coefficient using cosine theta. Okay, again I'll box up. Okay, so these are the two things that I need to do a comparison. Again, the same thing. I cross up all the common terms, and basically what I left over will be simply this. Okay, so over here you can see that this will be simply just two. Reflection coefficient 1, which is here. So what is left over here will be 3a set 3 theta m, which is written over here. And this will be 3a set theta m, which is written over here. So I just take the common factor, which is the 3a. Okay, so I left this term here. Okay, again, from here, you I can easily calculate what will be my so-called reflection coefficient 1 okay, by moving the 2 onto the other side, which I will so-called uh derived at this particular step so from here you can see that by having the first and second equation and then after that i do a compact coefficient i'm able to find my reflection coefficient at zero and reflection coefficient at one and then if you still remember on the earlier on i have mentioned that when we actually use trapezoid it will have a symmetric line and once i have a symmetric line basically this theta one will be equals to theta two and this reflection coefficient 0 will be equal to coefficient 3. So therefore, I have fully designed this. Okay, so what's next is I need to find the impedance, which I'm going to explain again how we can actually do this. Let's quickly revisit the equation here. So next, okay, we are going into the equation number 3. Okay, equation number 3. Okay, so basically what will be the A term? Okay, the A term will be equal to the maximum reflection coefficient. Okay, the key thing is basically the sign will be unknown. Okay, whether is it a plus and minus is unknown. But A will be always equal to the reflection coefficient, the maximum reflection coefficient, whether is it a plus or minus. It actually depends on this ZL minus Z0. If this term is a positive, then A will be equal to so-called reflection coefficient M. Okay, if this term here will give me minus 10. I will have A equals to minus reflection coefficient theta M. So basically from here, you can see that ZL minus Z0 okay, is actually a positive number. And once this is a positive number, okay, I will actually have this number, which is 0 0.05. So because this thing is positive, hence I successfully find my third equation A 
which is the positive of the maximum reflection coefficient, which is 0 0.05. Okay, so next. Okay, so this will be my fourth equation. Okay, so this fourth equation, uh, I don't do much equation discussion here. So what's next is over here is I need to compute, okay, what will be my set theta m here. So basically, I need to find out my set, okay, basically theta m. How can I actually find this thing here? Okay, so these are all the given thing here. So basically, this will be zl equals to 100, z naught equals to 50, reflection coefficient will be equal to 0 0.05. And I substitute inside here. Okay, so basically when I substitute inside here, okay, I should be able to calculate that this sec theta m will be equals to 1.408. Okay, so basically this, you can actually punch your calculator. It's more or less mathematics here. So I will not be able to go through in-depth discussion on this here. So in short, okay, you can actually calculate this using your calculator. And then if you really want to find Okay, so the theta m here, you can actually do a reverse here and you actually can find that the theta m is actually 0.78 in term of radian. Okay, so now I'm ready to calculate my so-called reflection coefficient at zero and my reflection coefficient at one here. So how can I actually find? Okay, remember I earlier on I found my A value and over here, basically I have found that this set theta m is equal to 1.408. Okay, so therefore, I can easily find my zero reflection coefficient. Okay, if you still remember, okay, earlier on I have calculated the A value, okay, which is 0 0.05. Okay, so basically from here A will be 0 0.05 divided by 2. And this will be the cube of 1.408. I actually calculate that okay, this reflection coefficient at zero is equal to 0 0.0698. Okay, so now again, I'm ready to find my reflection coefficient one. Okay, so this formula, okay, basically is what I need to find early on. If you still remember, this is actually where I actually get this formula here. Can you see? So basically, this will allow me to find the first reflection coefficient. So once I have this, I'm ready to find my first reflection coefficient. Again, three. Okay, so A will be 0 0.05. Okay, so this will be Q minus this. So again, from here, I can compute my first reflection coefficient, which will be 0 0.05. 0 0.1037 here. So basically, as I mentioned earlier on, okay, for this reflection coefficient at 3 will be equal to the reflection coefficient at 0. So they will have the same value of 0 0.0698. So reflection coefficient 2 will be the same as reflection coefficient 1, which is 0 0.1037 here. So basically with this again, okay, I'm ready to move on. Okay, remember what I need will be the impedance value. Okay, so basically this reflection coefficient is, uh, is I would say it's useless. Uh, basically, it will be helpful for me to find the impedance. So how can I actually find the impedance? Okay, so this will be so-called my second last formula here. So basically, this will be my second last formula. Okay, so over here, you can see that basically I have found this reflection coefficient here. So if I actually rearrange this formula, okay, I can actually find what will be my Zn plus 1 equals to Zn 1 plus reflection coefficient n here. So in short, let me give you an example. Okay, for example, now when n is equal to 0, okay, so when this is equal to 0, this will be Z1, which is shown here. So this will be 0, and this will be 1 plus, this will be so-called reflection coefficient at 0 here. Clear? So basically, when this n is equal to 0, which is the transmission line, which is 50, so this one plus this reflection coefficient at zero, okay, earlier on I have calculated, which is 0 0.0698. Okay, so therefore I just substitute here and therefore I can find my first impedance, which is 57.5 ohm. Okay, so once I have done this, I can also easily find my Z2. Okay, so basically for Z2, how to achieve will be the same as Z1. So basically for this case here, N is equal to one. So therefore this will be equal to two. This will be equal to 1. So therefore, I have my Z1. This will be 1 plus reflection coefficient at 1. Okay, so basically, again, I just need to substitute the value here. And I punch my calculator. I should be able to get that Z2 is equal to 70.8 ohms. Okay, I don't think I need to go through this Z3. Okay, but you can see that they are quite similar over here. So basically, how you get Z3 will be from this equation, you come over here. 
and whatever thing that you can easily extract the data. Remember, okay, the refraction coefficient one is equal to refraction coefficient two. So therefore, they have the same. And then from here, I have also successfully calculated the third impedance, which is 87.2 ohm. So with this, I actually successfully designed the impedance matching. Okay, before I continue, again, like guys, please help this channel. Okay, so if you feel that this video is useful, please help to like. So when you actually like, more people will be able to access to this video. So guys, help me by pressing the like button now. Again, for those who have learned something from this video, please consider to subscribe to this channel and also turn on your notification bell. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's continue on the next slide here. So this will be the last equation. Okay, the last equation is to allow us to calculate the bandwidth. The bandwidth that actually will be effective to do this impedance transformer. Okay, so if you still remember, this will be the last formula. Okay, and early on, I have done this. I basically calculate the theta m, which is 0 0.78 radians here. Okay, so what you need to do is you just submit here. You can calculate the effective bandwidth will be equals to 1.01. Okay, again, you can convert them into percentage, which means that it has a bandwidth, a total bandwidth of 101%. Okay, so basically with this, I have successfully designed three sessions of multi-session transformer using Chapel Shield. Okay, so, but again, okay, I'd like to show you another alternative. How can I actually find all this? Okay, so this example will be much more easier. Okay, so basically this is what I'm actually all given, right? So basically this is what I actually all given here. So again, if you can refer to a table, okay, which I'm going to show you to you how I actually get all this data. Okay, so what I'm going to show you to you, this will be what I have, which is 0 0.05, n is equal to 3. Remember, basically for this will be 100 divided by 50, which is equal to 2. Okay, the Z node is equal to 50 ohm. So basically, this is actually the outcome here. So what's next I need to do is, I actually can refer to this Chapitial multi-session transformer table here. Okay, so basically this Chapitial transformer table, remember the design is for N equals to 3, correct? And when N equals to 3, and remember, this maximum reflection coefficient is equal to 0 0.05. And the so-called ratio of ZL over Z0 is equal to 2. So basically, I box up this thing here. Okay, we show it to me is 1.1475, 1.4142, and 1.7429. So what happened here is basically you can see on the next slides here. Okay, so basically this is 1.1475, okay, which is the Z1 here. So the Z2, 1.4142, which is here. And then the Z3, okay, which is 1.7429, okay, which is here. And then what you need to do is you just need to multiply by 50. And you actually have also so-called design the multi-session transformer using Chapitio. Okay, so basically the answer is quite similar what I have done early on. Okay, only a slight different on Z3, which I get 87.2. Okay, I think for impedance in terms of the point, something you can omit. Okay, it won't have any significant contribution. Okay, so basically once I've done this, I'm ready to design this Chapitio multiple session transformer. As you can see from here, this will be the load. This will be the characteristic line. Okay, so basically this will be the value of Z1, which is 57.4. Okay, and the length need to be a quarter wavelength with respect to the center of the design frequency. Okay, so this Z2 will be equal to 70.7. And then over here, again, the length of the micro -street line will be take reference to the center of frequency. Same as Z3, it will be 87.1. Again, take reference, okay, a quarter wavelength with the center frequency. So basically with this, I'd like to end my discussion. In this video, okay, I have discussed how to design multi-session transformer using Chapit Shield. Okay, with this, thank you so much. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. See you soon. Bye-bye.